Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is just going to be another um, Fire Emblem discussion videos, though. Uh, at this point, they're more like uh, they're just ramblings. Um, I do tend to go on for quite a bit, but um, hopefully, uh, th well, this time the the topic is going to be kind of like spread out. I'm just going to talk about a lot of the stuff that's that's changed recently. Um, a lot of the new additions, a lot of the new uh, units, a lot of that stuff, a lot of how this is going. This might affect uh, my flyer ball, your flyer balls, other people's flyer balls, um, which you might run into out there now. Um, changes, units, like whole units, uh, Aether Age changes, and, and introduction of new skills and such. Um, <clears throat> I actually found it kind of interesting that uh, Acarus made his video yesterday. Um, it almost seems premature, like, you could just wait it a day and then wait for the CYL units to, like, have their skills be revealed, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of interesting. It just seemed to me like there was some sort of impatience to get that information out there, but, um, Acarus doesn't really, he's not, like, I mean, he's not, you know, impatience isn't something I would attribute to Acarus, so, uh, maybe he just didn't really care about what skills they had, maybe, I mean, if he makes a follow-up video, that'll be very interesting, but, yeah, I think, um, he probably, he probably doesn't really care all that much about what they have more so uh, who it is and, and, you know, just basically the unit itself. Because a lot of people, um, like, when it comes to the CYL units, a lot of people don't necessarily, like, just pick them up and then fodder them. A lot of people end up picking them up to, to merge them and actually just use the CYL unit. So the unit itself, talking about it and whatnot, is oftentimes more important than just talking about what skills they have. Because uh, half the time, they're a combination of, like, skills we already have and some of them we saw that were already there and uh, sometimes we get new skills but uh, it's usually better not to fodder them off for those skills because they'll be more valuable and just wait till those skills eventually trickle down to other units and then summon for those units. Uh, so yeah, um, that's just a, a curiosity to me that uh, he went, he pulled the trigger on that video so early. Uh, but for all I know, I mean it could be intentional and, and you know, Akris knows what he's doing uh, most of the time. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting. Uh, getting back to, to, to this video and, and what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, yeah, I was going to make this video on Thursday. I think I mentioned on Wednesday this was going to happen then. But it's a good thing I ended up waiting, uh, like I said. Because um, then I can just sort of capture a lot more stuff. And this isn't just going to be what happened last week or the week before that. I'm, I'm going to go decently far back. I mean, the Hell Banner wasn't too long ago. But I'll be talking about Hell and how all those things change the uh, might change or, or influence Aether Aids for flyers and, and such because it's it, uh, I, fi I find it kind of interesting and, and maybe this video itself is premature considering uh, there's probably another mythic banner uh, over the horizon after CYL but I mean I might talk about that uh, later but I'd rather just like try to encompass as much as I can rather than like every like every new mythic banner talk about it right um, but yeah so I mean a decent amount of stuff has changed between uh, back then and now so I think it's good to 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 Think about these things and, and see what we got here. Um, see where we're going. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, uh, one of the first things we'll talk about is... Let's see, let's get to this. One of the first things we'll talk about is is Hell, because she was one of the earlier uh, introductions. Um, basically, what's interesting is, is... I think, I mean, a lot of people have noticed this as well, but ever since Mirabilis came out, a flying anima mythic... Uh, there's been a, a pretty interesting trend of, of giving more, slightly more power to flyers uh, recently. Um, you know, like I said, Mirabilis, Hell is one. Um, we didn't really have too decent a uh, 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 fire tome nuker in terms of flyer until Byleth came out, until, you know, dual Byleth. Uh, so that was, I mean, that, that's kind of small and it's kind of like, if that came out any other time, you know, who cares? But like now it just seems kind of interesting, especially because she has ground orders. Um, but like you know, Byleth, uh, was the other thing, you know, obviously, you know, we'll talk about Tabarn and, and Divebond too as well. And, and just a bunch of other things. So it, it does feel like, you know, there's a, there's a small trend right now to try to get, uh, flyers some more skills because they, they've been somewhat neglected. Um, I, I understand from IS's perspective why they're neglected. It's because they can be very easily tipped to the side of being too strong. Um... Because a flyer's only weakness is going to be a bow, and with IO Shield Seal, IO Shield easily accessible, and more and more weapons coming out with more and more weapons and skills coming out with IO Shield built in, uh, there's a very real danger that flyers could sort of you know snowball out of hand. But um, you know, 
I don't think, you know, Flyer Balls are going to become the, the, the super meta. I mean, they might, you know, who knows, but um, it, it's still it's still interesting to talk about uh, all this, all the good stuff we're getting. Uh, so it makes kind of my Flyer, my investments in Flyer feel like they're paying off a little more. Um, yeah, so and for those of you out there as well who, who invested in Flyers, even, even though, uh, like, there's, you know, we have a kind of a shortage of skills, now is sort of our time to, like, start picking stuff up and... and and it's our time to shine in, in, in a sense. Um, but let's let's get let's kind of get into this. So, uh, Mirabilis, we talked about Mirabilis back with the uh, like a lot. We've talked to her about her a lot in the uh, videos uh, with my Aether raids because I actually have her and I'm using her. Uh, but the reason we're looking at this here instead of my Aether rage defense or something is because I didn't actually summon for Hell, and I don't think Hell is a bad unit per se. Um, I just it's it's hard to justify running hell for me especially for me i mean a lot of you out there um you know maybe you know maybe if you took for those of you who took my advice or, or, or you know those of you who had it, it doesn't even need to be my advice right you know you might have just had common sense right and and you went with uh with what's his name Ugh. ashnard right instead of camilla in that sense um then maybe you know hell is an interesting option um but so for my flyer ball hell is not very good or she's not the worst, but she's also like kind of hard to, to go with because Hell fulfills the uh, frontline sort of anchor position, you know, tanking role that I mentioned. Um, she she's supposed to be tanky, right? So let's go take a look at her skills. Uh, this HP before we get into that, I guess this HP is kind of low, forty, and then who knows how high it goes up to max. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the unit builder right now and, and see what a build could be for her, what an endgame build could be for her. But the bottom line is, you're not going to plus 10 hell the same way you're going to plus 10 a Camilla or an Ashnard or, you know, any, or, you know um, young young Minerva or, you know, anything else right out there. Uh, you're going to maybe at most get like one merge on her and then slowly add merges over time. If you, and that's even if you think uh, she's worth those merges to begin with, right? Um, but yeah, so the 40 HP is kind of like, it kind of kills her, especially like if you get a plus one merge, I think you get one extra HP, she's at 41 or something. Um, it, assuming you get a, the, the, the boon and something else. Uh, but two thing, the, the main thing that's sort of affecting this a lot is going to be the new bolt tower. Um, now I don't think, now don't get me wrong, right? I don't think that AR, Aether Raids... I don't know about Arena, but uh, Aether Raids is, is like, the difficulty and sort of the prestige of Tier 21, 27, uh, it's not like, it's not worthless now, right? It's not like it's nothing. But the fact that we have five escape ladders and a bolt tower that basically chunks people for 40 to, or not 40, well, you know, 40 damage, so 90 to 80% in a lot of cases of their HP does kind of lower the bar, I feel. Um... Aether Raids isn't a joke yet, but the fact that, I mean, you can even start talking about what, what it would take to make it a joke is is kind of, to me, disconcerting to some to some degree. Um, but that's all right, right? I mean, the and I'm not going to say it's like, like I said, I'm not going to say all these things have made Arena uh, Aether Raids super easy now. Um, about halfway through the season this week, uh, I already burned up all five of the escape ladders, you know what I mean? Uh, that was... You know, I'll probably talk about the Aether Raids thing, but that was that was a lot of like stupid nonsense on my part that I <laughs> accidentally uh, messed up there. Um, but anyway, the point is, um, this health on her is going to be very hard to get up without giving her health skills, and you really don't want to do that because um, she's got a lot of very good uh, skills on her already. Um, but so yeah, that's kind of a long way, just like just on the HP alone, along along uh, discussion, just on just on the HP alone. Um, but yeah, so the HP is forty. Bolt Tower hits her, she's down to one, and suddenly her um, anti-death ability on her scythe is basically worthless. Um, you know, which kind of sucks, but it, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so let, let's kind of move on. I mean, I don't think she's worthless, right? And that, that alone is not going to make her worthless. It's just that it's something to consider. Um, you can get more HP on like an Ashnard or again, like like all these all the other free-to-play units. You can get a plus 10 merged up, no, no problem. Um, but so let's take a look at Hell's Reaper. It gives her acceleration, which is always good. Uh, neutralizes the flyer IO shield built in, even better. Um, and the main ability, right, it's just that this confusing ass like 
uh, if they do if they do not use magic or staff yeah so she'll just survive with one hit against physical threats and she'll hit physical threats on their res stat um, so like I said this this thing this ability isn't so good anymore because like you just wait till bull tower hits and that's like 40 you're just chunking everybody else, everybody's basically you know walking cadavers at that point um, especially on flyers because flyers are not well known for having you know high HP values uh, one of the highest HP values you're gonna find is probably gonna be like uh, Aversa right just because you, you want to stack HP on her but if you looked at my flyer ball maybe we'll look at the flyer ball right now I'll bring it up um, you'll see that there's a lot there's not a lot of HP stacking on a lot of people and, and a 40 a, a hit for 40 is no joke um, but yeah so uh, her her axe is pretty decent. She's got distant counter, so she can fight off a lot of threats. Uh, she's got Luna, uh, you know, like I said, distant counter. So let's talk about here in this case guard bearing. Well, we'll talk about it right now. But inevitable death is probably one of the like premier reasons you'd want to run her as a as a as a frontline uh, anchor position tank. She basically has Ashnard's. Um, ability from his sword but for more stats though for one less on each on each uh, individual stat right because Ashnar does five to attack and defense and this does four to everything though uh, which is decent right because she hits for defense on magical units which that's usually their lower stat and she hits for res on physical units which again that's the, usually their lower stat for physical for physical hitters right uh, so she reduces both those by four and then gives her you know gives herself essentially gives herself speed by reducing the enemy speed and she's already pretty fast so um yeah if it weren't for like how hard it is to actually get like a plus 10 hell i mean she would be she would be great she'd be excellent um but like i said the the bull tower is kind of making that uh, an issue especially with how low her hp is uh and especially on my team right i didn't pull for her specifically for the fact that i don't need another green axe <laughs> unit i don't need another green unit period on my uh flyer ball um and she would kind of make all the investments I put into Camilla basically uh, irrelevant. So uh, I didn't go for that, but I think um, inevitable death with the distant counter and like her—it's not adaptive damage, but her slightly changing damage. Her basically, it's it's not like true adaptive damage, but it's uh, it's essentially adaptive damage, right? Because like I said, she'll hit uh, red. She won't hit the weakest, but she'll hit. You'll have a good chance of hitting the weakest because, like I said, physical threats usually have lower res, and uh, magical threats usually have lower defense. And she hits those on each one of those. You know, there's always like those gonna be res tank uh, physical units and and um, defense tank uh, magical units, and and that's that's all fine and dandy. But you know, in, in on average, you're gonna do pretty decent. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about guard bearing. Guard bearing is one of the new um, one of the new skills we got. For flyers, it's, it's, I think it's yeah, it's exclusive for flyers. Um, reduces damage from foe's first attack uh, by fifty percent. This is fine, especially for her. You might uh, Acarus. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about like just other builds, but like Acarus pointed out an interesting thing of, of putting on um, deflect magic on her. So her first attack, she gets hit by is reduced by fifty, and then the second one gets or deflect magic or whatever. Gets reduced by an 80%, so basically it makes her her very low res stat. Um, if I can get there, very low res stat, kind of um, patchable. So basically, uh, we came here to look at you know what these skills do. So let's kind of take a look at like uh, what she might end up as. So this is kind of what I consider uh, is going to be most common if you're going to run uh, if you're going to run the um, if you're going to run the hell right. Uh, it's gonna be hard to get a plus 10 there you go 43 so she'll have there you go she'll have 40 only have 3 HP left uh, she won't be able to die on the first initiation maybe hopefully she can counter back and kill something but again it's kind of hard uh, that's even depending let's go see what she looks like yeah so she'll have 42 uh, as long as you're over one right that's, that's kind of what it is um, but there you go so at a plus five flowers and a plus one you got a pretty decent um, Frontline tanker, a pretty decent, uh, what's it called? You know, anchor position unit, right? Um, you won't take damage here. Unfortunately, this becomes useless after the first turn. But again, when you're talking about Aether Raids, um, first turn, like first impressions are always going to be the toughest, right? So the first turn, 
the first initiation, the first combat is always going to be the hardest thing to, to get through, especially with a flyer ball, right? Um, as some of you have seen in my uh, defense uh, recap or whatever, overview, uh, you'll know that sometimes if your, uh, if your Camilla just gets sniped out, it's basically over at that point. Um, but yeah, so this is very good for, for that position to some degree, but again, it's always important to realize that uh, it's going to be a heavy investment as a plus 10 unit. Um, and I, leave, I left this blank here because, I mean, you can kind of just put whatever, right? The deflect magic is, is pretty good for uh, reducing um, how much damage he's going to take from uh, res threats. Uh, but you don't see a lot of res threats too much. I mean, you know, like we went over my, my, my replays last time and this week they kind of look very similar. Uh, a lot of people, you're just going to end up fighting, um, you know, Leafs that are just PEVEing your team and uh, bikes who just don't really care about anything, right? So um, whether you want to run the, uh, you know, the whatever, the deflect magic is up to you entirely. Um, I don't know if I would. But again, I, I'm not running her, so there you go. Uh, fortunately, also she gives out... Uh, actually, maybe we should see over here. Does it tell you? No, I can't see that. I don't really care as much. But she gives out uh, a stat. I can't remember what the what stat she gives out for uh, Mythics. Maybe it shows us over here. Let's go back to the uh, builder. And I think that's physical defense, which is pretty good, right? Um, but yeah, so I mean, if you run her with... Uh, with Yoon, you'll get the plus five to plus four to four, yeah, four to speed, and then the plus five to defense, which is good. If you run her with Sothis, which again, it's like it's not entirely recommended. Sothis doesn't do it very much, um, but at least you're getting the five and the five on defense and res. So it's you know just everybody's gonna get stacking on some some stuff. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is this is a she's all right, but I don't think she's gonna impact a lot of this stuff enough. Um, she certainly makes it harder to kill people uh, for for the enemy to kill your people, right? Because as the anchor position, she's in the prime position to get flyed around, right? You know, flyer formation around her, as well as having inevitable deaths. So as long as the ball kind of stays close to her, we can kind of... Oh, actually, can you do that? Let's go see. Um, I don't remember if that seal is here. Okay, it's not ground orders. It's uh, flyer, flyer guidance. There we go. So maybe you can run something like Flyer Guidance on her, and then kind of that alleviates some of the B slot uh, necessities for the other units. And uh, theoretically, anyway, it should mean like the units will try to like stay near her more often than not. Uh, so if you kind of have like a ball around her, people are going to have to run into this inevitable death to fight you, which is you know minus four for all your stats. Uh, then you have to worry about all the goads and wards uh, stacking on you know your enemy side at this point. Uh, so, like I said, she's not bad. Um, again, uh, she's just not very good on my flyer ball mainly because the uh, you know I have Camilla and she's kind of doing a similar thing. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's let's talk about I guess another thing here is guard. So let's talk about guard bearing specifically. Uh, guard bearing is very interesting. Uh, I was debating on my Camilla, right? I mean Camilla, I'm having I'm having some 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 thoughts kind of go through with Camilla in terms of. You know what to end up actually running on her um so as we saw one video she just kind of took the l immediately to a leaf uh that was just like a plus one leaf or a, it was a low investment leaf it might have been a plus one or not any merges at all um but the leaf was kind of you know as not it wasn't an optimal leaf now the point is i ended up changing some wards and, and whatnot and putting that on her so she can stack more defense uh and then after that i faced a few more leafs and they all went uh, straight to um what's his name straight to Duma and they, they just hit Duma and moved on from their lives. Um, so the thing I want to point out here is the fact that they dodged Camilla instead of just going straight after her means that maybe Camilla is tanky now. But uh, on, the, on the flip side is that she may not be tanky enough to fight against a real um, a real leaf. Because uh, to me, to, like I said, to a large degree, those leafs were just sort of like, well, I have a leaf and I've had some merges, so I just have that strategy as a side strategy. Uh, but it didn't seem to me like any of those people were like just leaf, like, you know, to, to borrow a, a, a turn phrase, I guess. They weren't like leaf mains, right? That, that's my point. Um, the same way like I'm a bulky main in, in light or I'm a, you know, Felicia main in in Astra. Uh, so they didn't seem like, you know, leaf mains. They just kind of like, I have a leaf. Uh, he seems like he could PVE this really easily, so I'll just throw him in there. Um, 
So in terms of that, the question is, would I think about running guard bearing? Like, was guard bearing the solution? Can I switch back to a bunch of uh, wards or not wards? A bunch of goads instead of the the ward stacking? Can I do that and then kind of balance out other stats as well? And just you know, I can run the guard bearing and be good. Uh, I think to some degree, but unfortunately, to my my problem is that uh, I have a hard time giving up the guard. Even though, as you guys have seen, uh, it's pretty counterintuitive uh, with the Fury, considering you know she takes damage and she gets below. Um, which, we'll, again, we'll talk about in the Aether Raids thing. Uh, but all things held equal, right? Let's talk about the utility of guard versus guard bearing. One of the issues that kind of comes up is that, like, if I had guard bearing and I got attacked by Leaf in that position, or she got attacked by Leaf, he could still just leave, right? He's not trapped there. If you had guard there, it would certainly keep him from being able to activate his special charge and then do other things as well, which is why people keep dodging uh, Camilla, is because he won't be able to do his thing after that. Um, so I think it's hard to give up the guard, because, especially that too, because if you have someone go into your, your unit and they can, let's say, they can double her or double Camilla, because you know, Camilla is what I'm running, so let's, I'm kind of focusing on her. Um, if they go into Camilla, oh, actually I actually have a Camilla over here. Uh, if they go into Camilla and she has guard bearing on the follow up, they could probably just, you know, special charge her and kill her that way anyway, right? Because she's not like particularly tanky on Fury anyway. Um, so the fact that it reduces damage on the first combat to me is a little bit less valuable because there's, you're going to run into a lot of people that, for one, leaves, right? Who just hit you and leave and then do it again later uh but for two and you know we don't have like the problem with a fireball is they have to kind of stay there leaf can hit you and then leave if he was doing he couldn't really do that against a like a cav line or something or just a team that has a lot of cav units and dancers because you do that and then you they the calves have a lot of range so they move out of you know their their hole there and they start hitting all your other units and then that's what you don't want right but the flyer ball is relatively susceptible to that strategy because they only have so much movement and they all just kind of ball up anyway and they just like move the ball slightly forward um so we don't have the range to be able to like deal with hit and run strategies a lot of times um and one of the things that that like i said the the, the leaf himself is very strong in that sense so I think the guard is very valuable because not only, I mean, the guard also serves the purpose of reducing how much damage you do across the entire engagement, all seven turns. I mean, as long as she has proper HP, right? Uh, as long as she meets those requirements, that guard is going to be useful throughout the entire match where this is only on the first, you know, attack of the first engagement, right? So I don't find guard bearing too particularly useful. I think if you guys saw my uh, Aether, one of my Aether Raids offenses, uh, someone had like a plus 10 uh, blue lance flyer that new blue lance flyer that had guard bearing and that was pretty scary i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie that was um that was pretty interesting but in terms of the way my flyer ball is built and maybe other people's flyer balls built if you're if you're really kind of committed to that flyer uh, ball formation there's too many balls in this video if you're really committed to that flyer formation there um the guard bearing probably isn't going to have as much um value to you especially against you know like i said hit and run strategies or um like Gale Force strategies and things like that. Um, but yeah, so like I said, guard bearing, it's a little on the weaker side, I think. Uh, it could be very, it could be very powerful for, for making sure they survive. Um, but I, I really do think just that maybe a Camilla like this might be just ultimately better. Uh, and this is, I guess this is just like looking ahead uh, into the, I want to talk about the, um, the Aether Raids uh, defense recap. I am sort of feeling like maybe I should just go with this and give up the attack, the, not the attack, yeah, well, the attack, but give up the, like, kill potential on Camilla and just straight up uh, make her as tanky as possible. Um, but yeah, let's, we'll, we'll see how that goes when the time comes. But, so that's that. Um, the other thing now uh, I want to talk about is going to be to barn with Dive Bomb. I think, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a good skill. It's not... I'm not going to sit here. I mean, I definitely think it's better than guard bearing um, to a large degree, just because guard bearing, you're you're putting it on units for defense and hoping it goes that way. Um, so it's it's you're running it for that. I mean, there's no. I mean, I don't imagine you're going to be running a player phase guard bearing unit anytime soon, right? 
Um, so Dive Bomb is infinitely more useful because you can capitalize on it more given you're going to be using it more on player phase. You're going to be doing things with uh, Dive Bomb. Uh, Dive Bomb enables you to do things on the player phase where Guard Bearing doesn't enable you to do anything. Uh, it's a very passive sort of like, well, hopefully the, this works well on a defense team. Uh, but in terms of Dive Bomb, uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff you can use it. I run, uh, what's her name? I run the girl on my team, uh, Young Pala. Uh, that would be a very good skill on her. Uh, she basically just quads before anybody has a chance to say anything. The problem is, sh that's not so valuable on her because she can basically kill people on a double anyway. Um, and she's got so much defense and so much, uh, what's the other one? So much defense and so much, uh, res from the fact that she I'm running Mirror Strike on her that... She can take one hit back and then double them back again, and if they survived the first time, right? So, I think it's not that big a deal to be running that on her, um, especially considering, uh, like, the biggest problem I'm going to run into, right, is going to be that, uh, what's his name? That bike. That bike, Dive Bomb isn't going to help for shit against Bike, uh, pardon the language there, but he, Dive Bomb isn't really going to help anything against Ike, like, Bike... Yeah, it's it's not very useful. So, uh, I think dive bomb is fine. Um, just I, there's no there's not a whole lot of place to use it other than um, like gale force flyers. Those would be like excellent for for this, and not even all of them. Only some of them, right? Because uh, you have to have a, a uh, I mean, for one, you have to have a weapon. Find a weapon that has like a skill cooldown reduction. Two, you'd have to find someone who has decent movement. Uh, in that sense, you've only got. Well, I mean, I say only, but there's actually quite a bit of them, right? So, I mean, you got the two Tibarns, which are both great for Gale Forcing. Uh, you've got the, um, what's his name? Nesala, who can be a Gale, a Gale Force unit to some degree. Uh, so, there you go. I mean, basically, the best user of the Dive Bomb is already going to be the Tibarn. So, in terms of general flyer usage, it's not so good, right? Like, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a little lackluster. Um for at least for defense right on offense i don't really use too many flyers on offense um especially like well on astra anyway i use them on light but i think on in terms of like the light my light season bulky is not going to benefit very much from dive bomb because it's going to affect your first combat and then after that you know whatever's going to happen is going to happen right so yeah so i mean in terms of you know my teams and and you know the flyer ball and defensive stuff it's not wholly useful uh, I do value defense a lot more because there's a lot more pressure to perform on defense because you really need to be like at the top like you need to really think out every single skill on defense uh, because you're not there to baby it right you you just leave it and it has to deal with the world uh, as best it can and you go you have to go on with you know you're doing your your aether uh, your your offense your offense part um, but yeah so uh, I well I get you know yeah like I said so. The dive bomb is very good. Don't get me wrong. A desperation that uh, doesn't require you that you can just do turn one is 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 excellent. I don't think that should be understated. It's just that on defense, not a whole lot of use for it. On offense, I mean, you know, I don't use it. And as well as like just putting like I mean, I could put it on on uh, <laughs> I could put it on Cordy right, or I could put it on Pala uh, just for the memes. Uh, but I, I eventually want to run like I said the the summer Byleth which you just put wind sweep on her and it's just dive bomb but better because they can't counter attack whatsoever so if you don't kill them with the first two attacks you still you're still safe after that um so i think like i said there there's it's a good skill but i think it's 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 carefully placed like they knew what they were doing when they gave us dive bomb they were like well you know it'll help to barn he's a flyer uh, what others will it help? I don't know. Probably Nesala, Gale Forcers, and what else? Well, that's about it. Um, everybody else can use it, but is it going to make them? Is it going to skyrocket them anywhere? Not really. Um, like I said, uh, with Cordy, you get like a plus ten Cordy and Dive Bomb. Uh, you're pretty solid at that point. I mean, I used to run I, my my Cordy was at uh, basically kind of. I mean, to me, the biggest impact. I'm going to talk about her for a little bit. The biggest impact is honestly just Cordy. Um, let's just kind of go in here real quick. Cordelia, right? Because now, before I used to run, uh, oof, 
lag. Okay, maybe maybe we won't do this. Um, but anyway, the, the 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 bottom line is, uh, I used to run Cordelia with uh, Fury, Fury three, and Desperation, right? Because maybe the first time you'll hit, you'll double somebody. Uh, then, uh, then you'll let's see. So we got this finally up again. Uh, let's pretend we got a plus ten just uh, for the memes. Let's go find Cordy's Lance here. Uh, I used to run Fury to get her into Desperation range. All right, so here's here's something I find interesting too. I can't remember what this is. Oh, well, actually, this one might be better now. Um, yeah, I think it might be a lot better now. Uh, I didn't run this originally before because you wanted to get in desperation range, and desperation range is under the range. So basically, you either have desperation active or you have this active, and I'd rather have desperation active. So having desperation active means you're basically giving up this ability. So I gave, I ran her on a speed, uh, a speed refine. Because look at, I mean, look at the stats. Without even a speed boon or anything, 44 speed is nothing to sneeze at. It's 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 decent. And then you know you get something. Uh, where is it here? So, you know, you get 46 speed on uh, that. I mean, let's take these off. So, it's 44, right? On uh, uh let's, let's give her that. That actually looks better. Uh, okay, well, whatever. Uh, 44 speed is pretty decent, right? And I used to run her on Fury, so that's plus 3 more speed. Fury 3. Uh, then the Desperation, right? But now, Dive Bomb, basically... Let's just give it to her right now, right? Uh, dive Bomb. Dive Bomb allows you to run Life and Death, right? Or, I mean, four, you can do four, but we'll go three for basics. Um, and then, like I said, you can run her on her weapons refined, which is plus four attack and speed, which is better than the three speed you get out of there. So now you've got like a 50 speed Cordelia quadding people for free, essentially, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what her, her ability does. I think he, she was, but I think, I think she needed to stay over a threshold. I'll have to look that up later. I'm looking like an idiot right now. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, my Cordelia is like a plus two right now. Um, I like her. I like using her. Uh, she's good for PvE, but she's not wholly that useful for Pv, um, PvP in, on defense, which is what I need her for. Uh, well, she's better. She'd be good if I didn't have Pala, right? That's, that's kind of the bottom line. Um, and then that's So this is even before you calculate in the, like, the speed boon if you want, uh, the attack boon, right? I mean, I think I'd probably go with an attack boon just because you're already stacking so much speed. Um... But there you go, like, you run this on defense, and, you know, you got a very threatening quad attacker on your team. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think Dive Bomb is, is just basically exceptional on her. Uh, but unfortunately, you're giving up the, the uh, Flyer Formation, which is going to be harder for her to get into position. Now, like I said, we had Hal there, and she had the Flyer Guidance. Or if you have something else that has a Flyer Guidance, there you go. Uh, you're pretty solid. Like, Ashnard can have Flyer Guidance and, and be a, you know, make her into a huge threat. Well, basically, the bottom line was now her, the fact that Dive Bomb is here, you can change her A slot passive, and you're basically solid. Like, <laughs> this is a very scary thing to see. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's Dive Bomb. Uh, in terms of, like, Tabarn, he's all right, but again, he's just kind of a flying Gale Forcer, which is nothing to be understated, considering he doesn't have to worry about, uh, he's a three, he's a three space flying unit that doesn't have to worry about, uh, for one, trenches, right? Uh, which, you know, calves have to worry about. For two, uh, you know, trees and all that stuff, which also calves have to worry about. Um, so I think he's he, he's very good. It'll be good on him. Um, he might even, like, he's, he sounds like he'd be pretty fun to use on a flyer ball to, uh, to catch people out. Like, for flyer balls, instead of running the, uh, what's his name? The Ellie Wood. You see a lot of Ellie Woods on defense. Instead of running that Ellie Wood to do whatever Ellie Wood does on Gale Force and just irritate the hell out of everybody... Uh, well, you know, you could just run the, the Tabarn and have him probably take out Snipe 2 units on accident or something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, what else was I going to go over today? So let's move on to, uh, I guess, like some other news. Uh, we now have more flowers. Um, that's a pretty small one, pretty good one, but uh, pretty small, and uh, I, I like it. I think it's awesome. Uh, it just means, like, my Camilla is now an even better investment, so I can get her a little bit more stats, um, and she can be a lot more useful. Uh, basically, she's, she might end up looking like this, so she'll be 56, 53, 38, uh, 43, and 48. Uh, not a whole lot. Again, the flowers are kind of like the least, neither here nor there, but decent, decent. Um, let's see. The other thing I wanted to mention was... Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I went over the Aether Rage changes with the, the Bolt Tower and that. Uh, I went over Hell. I went over Guard Bearing, Dive Bomb. Uh, the, some of the other things I want to mention are going to be the obvious... Um, Thanks to the new uh, IV mangoes, 
Um, we can now change their their uh, their skills, which is pretty great. Uh, don't look at this build. It's just I was just thinking about it. Um, but yeah, so now this opens up the way for um, changing IVs on these units. And I was kind of it's really funny because like, I was thinking about earlier like th th there's probably going to be some way for us to get IVs on these uh, you know temp tempest trial units on these uh, grailable units at some point. Um, it'd be nice, but, um, you know, and that came out, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think Cronia, it's funny because Cronia is one, like, th there's a few that are just like, there's no real choice to them. It's just kind of like, oh, finally, I can run the attack IV on Cronia. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot going on there. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, Cronia can use attack, of course. She can use, um, HP, uh, help, help her get over the, the threshold of, um, what is it? So she's 65 right now, right? Uh, which helps you get over like uh, panic matters and, and all kinds of other uh, HP based abilities. Um, but uh, I think attack is going to be your best bet in this situation just because she really needs to one shot counter as much as humanly possible. Um, do I think lol attack and defense is helpful for that? I think it's decently helpful. Uh, but I pair her with people who have sudden, who have pan, or with uh, uh, Tethys who has sudden panic, so it's not that big a deal. Um, I don't actually run her. I don't have close counter or anything really useful in the B slot passives, is why I don't run her. But it's like theoretically, when I when I get these skills, uh, this is kind of what I what I'll be doing. Uh, like I said, this will probably just be a special spiral, and this will probably just be another savage blow. Um, but that's 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 not here nor there. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, let's go look at... Uh, so Minerva... Minerva doesn't have a boon here or a bane. Uh, mainly because it's hard for me... Like, it's hard to really think about what you'd want her, want on her, period, right? Like, she's already got tremendous speed. Do you really... I mean, do you want to? I mean, I guess you could boost that by two points, but... Is it really useful? Not so sure. Um... The HP, again, is good, especially because we got this, you know, new crazy bolt tower hitting people for 40. Um, you know, attack could always be useful, right? Uh, what I think might be pretty beneficial would be to have uh, a res... What the fuck? Uh, anima, sorry. Uh, Duma and uh, Mirabilis. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, so maybe have like a res boon, uh, help patch up her res a little bit. Um, but I think like these stats are much better suited just kind of like keeping them as they are, right? You're getting three res on her, which is all right. Right, are you even getting three? Hold on. Yeah, you're getting three on res, which is all right, but you're losing some attack. Uh, you're losing some HP, I think. Yeah, you're losing some HP and some defense. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'll take experimenting. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably just wait to see if anybody else, see what anybody else is doing with uh, with her. But I think to me, like, she's already solid, right? Her biggest weakness is her res. And do you really want to waste whatever these mangoes are? You know, who knows how many how many we'll get on, on patching up such a weak stat. Uh, when, for one, Mirabilis, she's at 29 right now, plus the 5 from the... Um, from the uh, res bond that I have her on, she's at 34, which is respectable. It's not, you know, it's not great, but it's respectable. Um, and then we're getting five. Well, I don't know if she's getting five more flower. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're all getting an, a flower increase or what. But you know, there you go. She's at. If we give her all 10 flowers right now, she's at 30, uh, 30 res, 45 speed, uh, 45 defense, 64, you know, attack. There you go. Um, so 30 plus the five is 35 res, right? Uh, do you really want to go out of your way to give her the plus uh, res boon? Not so sure. It's something uh, I think, you know, like I said, it'll take time to see where we're at with that. Uh, and then uh, lastly, this is, so I have her and she's not plus 10, she's like plus 5. Just because I kind of gave up on her because it's kind of hard to like build her. But now I'm actually kind of excited because as you can see here, she's got 43 speed. Um, it, it's kind of going out of your way to... To give her a lot of speed, so you gotta get the, the you gotta give her a speed boon. Uh, for one, you have to keep your uh, whatever on her. You need to. Uh, oh, you can't see them. Hold on. Let me, okay. You're running two peonies, uh, and then the speed refine here, and then maybe like a brazen speed or, or just maybe some speed here, whatever you want to put here. That's speed based. Um, yeah. So, I think uh, it's it's interesting to me. 
because uh, now you can run Special Fighter, which is probably the best skill in that in that slot for that. Um, you're running, uh, and then I'm running Speed Smoke on her because for one, you're already de reducing defense and res, uh, but for two, uh, Special Fighter means you don't have to run Pulse Smoke, unless you know, it's probably still a better idea to run Pulse Smoke honestly, because well, let's just do this here actually. <laughs> Let's run Speed Smoke here and Pulse Smoke here. Oop. Right. Uh, this way you can actually deal with Lysithias and um, Ophelias on defense. So you just like Pulse Smoke them. And everybody who wants to attack you is going to be reduced in speed. Uh, so you you know, you basically at 50 speed to, to some degree, right? Theoretically, anyway. Um, so yeah, like I think... Uh, and then obviously you can put whatever dagger you want on here if you want to put... Uh, I like this one because this combined with Aether means that um, Aether gets charged super fast. So you'll hit somebody, right, uh, that's a two, they'll hit you back, that's another two, and then you'll hit them back with the Aether every single time, uh, most of the time, as long as they counter, right? And if you're hitting someone who can't counter, then um, you won't have the Aether charged for that fight, you'll have it for the next fight, uh, which is a lot of times more necessary, because they'll hit you, and then you'll take damage, and you hit them back. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this is just a, a build I wanted to point out, because I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, I like... I like the fast uh, Cecilia. I like the special fighter on her. It's 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 really uh, it's really interesting to me. I think it'd be really fun. Um, don't want to invest the Grails into getting a plus ten Cecilia. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, don't want to waste the mangoes on her again. I don't know about that. Um, so yeah, let's get into another. Uh, the la I think this is going to be the last point. Uh, this video is already kind of long. Um, let me see if I can. Let's put this away. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so it's already like a 40 minute video, so let's let's kind of get into the, the final point here, and let's talk about, uh, where are we here, what the fuck, pardon, again. Okay, so let's go take a look at this, uh, these units, see how they might affect, I mean, the main one we're going to be talking about is probably just going to be, um, what the hell is that guy's name, uh, the bow guy here. Uh, let's see. So, uh, whatever his name is, Dimitri. My road to redemption is this? Yeah, is it Dimitri? Oh, see, the other one's Claude. Dimitri, Claude, Lysithia, and uh, Edelgard. Uh, let's see. So, in terms of uh, tanks, I mean, I'm not going to review like all these units like necessarily, uh, just because, again, I'm a flyerball uh, based kind of channel. Um, but uh, this looks pretty good. Um, having the breath distant, basically this is just distant breath. Uh, I can't wait for that uh, A slot skill to come out. We just have like a distant counter with a breath uh, <laughs> built in. Oh my gosh, dude. That sounds ridiculous. I would love that actually more than anything else. Um, but yeah, so, you know, distant breath he's got. Um, where else here? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this skill here looks inheritable, right? So you're getting plus five attack defense. Uh, and without even having to be close to people, without having the bond restriction, you just have to be two two spaces away from someone, which is pretty good, right, for the flyer ball. Um, I kind of like this. I, I, it would be something if I were to take this. It'd be something I would consider for um, what's his name, uh, Duma specifically. Um, again, Duma is like the weakest point in my um, my current defense. He if. if if he just gets hit with the uh, with the leaf, then I'm basically you know I die, um, which I think is all right because anyone else in that position is also still just gonna die. So you know, but yeah, this looks pretty interesting. Um, problematically being, you're only getting plus five attack defense, which is, which I mean you know it's like oh only getting plus five, um, most of the time. But then you have to worry about like well hopefully you get some 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 penalties on you. Uh, to make this worthwhile, uh, then you get more. Because right now, like, if you don't have any penalties, then attack defense form is going to outpace this. Um, but yeah, so that, I mean, that's fine. Uh, it's an interesting skill. I think most people are just going to follow this off to Fallen Ike. If they stack, because if they do stack, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, so here's the most interesting unit to us. Uh, so I don't like Claude. Uh, and I haven't played uh, Three Houses. I haven't played any Fire Emblem. Um, though I want to point out that I probably will play Three Houses at some point. Uh, it does look like an excellent game. It looks like something I'd be into. But I think I, 
I want to play Awakening first, and I think there's another one before I get to this one. I don't have, you know, yeah. I, I like to play things sort of in somewhat order. I don't want to just jump into three houses. I like to play something that came before. I don't want to play like some of the older ones. Oh, that was the other one. Uh, I want to play the two, the, the GameCube one and the Wii one. Uh, I want to play those two, and then I want to play uh, Awakening, and then finally uh, three houses at the end. So that's going to be my like Fire Emblem timeline for any you give a shit. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look here. Uh, Claude is going to be the most interesting unit in terms of what he has to offer to the flyer, uh, the flyers. So let's take a look here. Right off the bat, uh, in terms of fodder, he is absolutely loaded. Um, basically, run, f uh, you know, give give somebody a Fury three from someone else, and then give them Fury four and this, and you're basically solid. Like he, he has you know paid off in spades. Um, in terms of himself, right? So let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, when Parthia accelerates special trigger one, excellent. Uh, basically just means you have a one turn like Moonbow right here. Uh, one turn noontime, basically anything, whatever you want to put on him is one turn, right? Um, for two, let's, let's see what else he's got. Effective against flying, that's basic. Combat and if unit deals damage to foe special. Okay. Um, this is kind of interesting. It looks like it'd be kind of fun on a flyer ball. Right? Like, for those of you out there, I mean, this is a pretty good, like, what the position... My flyer ball defense that has Loki on there basically is a worse version of this guy. So for those of you who liked that variation or maybe you're thinking about that variation... I would just honestly suggest running Wind Parthia because for one, or Wind Parthia, well, I mean, you know, who cares about Claude? It's all about the, the weapon. Uh, because for one, he's going to be a lot tankier because if you run, wait, okay, deals damage. Okay, so you have to, so I think you have to run Moonbow, right? I don't think you can run, oh my gosh, 50% of maximum HP. Uh, I've forgotten about that. That's a lot of HP, um, especially because if you build him right, he is going to be monstrous. Um, but like, I, I, so let's take them at a plus ten because for one, it's a chooser of legend. So you get one for free, and then you spark them. That's where you're already at a plus one. You just gotta wait for like a hero fest or something to come out um, with decent rates, and there you go. You've got you know your plus ten uh, anchor position bow unit if you want them there anyway. I mean, you might put them somewhere else. Um, but here, here's why I find him more valuable than Boki. Boki gets out of the flyer ball, and she's basically just dead. She's gonna go die. Um, but he has. Um, the plus five to all stats, basically a Fury five for free without the damage penalty on initiation. So he's going to leave the flyer ball, initiate with the plus five to everything. The flyer ball is going to follow behind him and then uh, just kind of, you know, be there. So when it's the opponent's turn to attack and they end up attacking Claude, he's still going to get the plus five from the bonuses because theoretically the flyer ball should have like just kind of followed him. I mean, maybe not like formed around him well enough, but they're all close to him, hopefully within two spaces, right? So... This should always be active on defense. On offense, you know, my, my first thing is always uh, CC Vantage. How can I CC Vantage with this unit, right? Um, that's always, like, my first instinct. Um, but on offense, I mean, he's still going to be good, granted, you know. But on defense, this looks pretty scary. Um, yeah. So, you know, 50% of your mass, max HP. And that's even considering whether or not they dropped you below half, right? I mean, you might be able to one-shot him. But if you want IO shield on him, he's basically unkillable. Um I think. I mean, he's stacking a lot of stats. We have to see what his uh, BST is. Um, I might talk about that a little bit in my uh, Aether Aids defense video uh, when when that comes out. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, based on this this here alone, this looks pretty scary. Um, yeah, you don't need to run Noontown or or you know Soul or anything like that because he's got the Moonbow because uh, he's got the uh, HP you know regeneration fifty percent of your max health on the Parthia. Like, gosh damn. Um, but yeah, so for one, there's that. For two, Fury 4, excellent skill. Uh, deals 8 damage, but he'll heal. Theoretically, theoretically, he'll heal it back as well as like if you're running him with a, um, what's her name? That girl could be really good, Leanne or uh, Ryson. Or Ryson. Um, they get close, they heal up. You're basically healing back the 7 out of the 8 from the Fury, and then he just heals up back whatever he has from whatever. Um, so this is, this, is, this is just great, right? Um... 
And then secondly, I think he's going to have low speed, right? Because of the speed. Not like super low. I don't think he's going to like be like in the 12 or something like that. But I think he might be middling, maybe 30-something, maybe 40-something. Who knows, right? Maybe I don't think he's going to be, well, maybe 40 at the most, right? 40, 41, maybe 40 at the most. But I think middling around 30, 30-something, 30 probably over 35. I, I don't know. I'm not a stat predicting person. No, I'm not like um, Phoenix Master 1 or anything. But I do find this kind of interesting. Um, I don't think he's going to be a speed demon. I think... They're putting all these skills on him to sort of patch up that speed. Uh, and then he'll be fast because of all the things they put on him. Um, so, I mean, for one, so you've got this here. you got the Fury form. Do I think that, could there be something better? Uh, probably. I think in terms of defense, no. You can put, obviously, I mean, the, the obviously thing that the the thing that comes out is going to be the fear uh, the uh, distant count or the close counter or the close ward or I don't know if we have close ward yet uh, or close foil, uh, which I think would be great, but I think the the speed that you're getting from pure, from I think all the stats you're getting from Fury is uh, it's kind of hard to pass up, but yeah, so it's I mean it's going to be between Fury and close something close counter. Um, ultimately, probably close counter is just going to be better though, um, and then. Uh, the B skill is nothing to, nothing to really care about. Uh, and then we get to the last skill here being attack speed rain. Uh, this skill here is dumb. <laughs> like, there's no other way for me to say this. Like, basically, uh, I'm just, I mean, from, okay, so from my perspective, I don't like Claude. I don't give a crap about Claude. Um, yeah, I just don't care. So I'm just going to grab him and fodder him off immediately uh, for for this skill down here. Um, Fury 4 is pretty good too, but uh, like Bulky is not going to use it very well. Um, but yeah, so the attack speed rain uh, is going to be an excellent skill for uh, flyer balls in general, as well as, uh, you know, uh, Bulky. Uh, Bulky has... So let's, let's think about this for a second. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to get the free one. I don't know if I'm going to spark him. I might... Um, but I really want to save up for the um, when when uh, dual Byleth comes back, and uh, I think it's better to just wait till you know whatever's on the horizon for the next uh, mythic banner. Um, but yeah, not to mention we might be getting more of these uh, rain skills, right? But in terms of like running this on Boki, it's not as optimal because you're going to reduce their attack by three uh, by four, um, and then their attack their their speed by four. So basically, it's just going to make it harder for them to double you. Uh, and make it easier for you to double them. Uh, and it basically makes you tankier. The thing about uh, chill defense, which is what you what I running on what I'm running on uh, Boki right now, is that she uh, it reduces their defense by seven, which makes it easier to um, to kill them, essentially. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think if you survive, the more you can survive, the more damage you can deal out essentially, which, I think the speed rain might be good, but uh, in the future, I would probably just like um, attack defense rain. Like, whenever that comes out, that's, I mean, this is like already pretty dumb as it is, but when that comes out, good gosh, man, like, my Boki will be legendary. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, originally, I was like, okay, well, this B, sk this B skill here is kind of crap. Um, why don't we just put a lull skill in there? But I don't think, uh, yeah, flyers can't run lull, lull skills. Um, so that's that. Uh, but let me go see real quick. Yeah, flyers can't run lull skills. Um, if they could, I mean, that'd be ridiculous, right? Because you just run like a lull speed defense or something here, and, and you're you're basically sorted forever. Um, but yeah, so in terms of your flyer ball, if you like Claude or, you know, you know, I think, I mean, for one, if you like Claude, I mean, go ahead and run him. I think... Uh, having a, a range unit, especially this one in particular, as your anchor position is not too bad. Um, it gives them less room to move around, less wiggle room. Um, but yeah, like he, this looks scary. Uh, if I'm, if I'm being honest with you, like I'd be hard pressed to, to run into this on, uh, on a defense. I mean, especially like you could probably just put guard bearing in the B slot or just guard in general, because he, I mean, I mean, guard is going to be excellent because he is going to uh, regenerate his HP, which means he'll always be, theoretically, right? He'll always be above guard um, threshold. Uh, so I think that's just, like like I said, he looks he looks insane. Um, for, I just, I'm sad it's attached to him and uh, not someone else, but yeah. 
Um, I, like I said, uh, he's probably going to be my pick. I'm going to fodder him off for the uh, attack speed rain. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, in terms of flyer balls, I think, though, it's important to realize that I might not like him. Maybe you may or may not like him or run him. But I think it's important to realize that if, with flyer balls probably going up a little bit more, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to start seeing him on defenses, um, flyer ball defenses. So just keep an eye out. Have in, have in mind a plan to deal with him because uh, this kit looks like stacked, especially for uh, especially for a flyer ball, right? Because on defense, right? Because this attack speed reduction thing here is basically just Ashnard's thing, except Ashnard has defense, which makes enemies more vulnerable to damage, which I kind of like that better, which is why I want an attack defense rain. Um, but like imagine running both of them. They're taking minus nine attack. Like, you're not going to kill anything. Like, theoretically, anyway. Like, gosh damn, dude. Like, who are you going to kill with a minus nine flat reduction? And, you know, yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, it looks good, uh, you know, on a flyer ball. So they either attack him and he gets his... Yeah, he, they attack him in the flyer ball and he gets his bonus from his weapon or he goes out to attack them and because he's initiating, he gets the bonuses from his weapon. Um, yeah, so, you know, he's going to be really hard to kill with Leanne or Rayson or something like that, healing him the whole every step of the way uh, with his own healing and all that stuff. So I think uh, you wouldn't be too too poorly served if you wanted to run him on a flyer ball the way I have Boki on my uh, garbage flyer ball for uh, I kind of, well, that was kind of a control group to see. Uh, how mine does in comparison, but anyway, uh, like I said, this is this looks um, this looks very interesting. Um, I'm actually kind of thinking now, maybe I'm not gonna pick him. I might pick someone else um, because, like I said, I do want this and I do want to fodder this off to Boki or somebody, but I don't. I think it'd be better just to wait till we get an attack defense rain um, because it's probably gonna come at some point. Um, like it's like a lull skill right i mean it's worse than a lull skill it's, in some cases they're both 50 50 they're both equally good but like there's there's slightly different uh uses for each one um but yeah like i said uh keep your eye out on on on, on claude he's probably going to be one of the more dangerous ones to come out of this um dimitri he's got disencounter um whatever let's go back again like he's got like a disencounter breath, right? But his like he's a blue lance, right? We've we've faced lots of blue lances before, um, you know. We can deal with them, and he's got reduction of of damage if he has higher defense, right? Which is good for countering things like uh, high mages, anyway. Um, but yeah, so like this, I mean, you know, we we've seen very very strong blue um, lances before, right? We I mean, there's there's it's not there's a, there's never a shortage of of being able to deal with them, um, but very aggressively strong hard to kill um flying bows uh have not been the norm we have not seen very many of them um basically it's just been boki and hinoka uh there's a, there's a few others but i mean obviously none of these are noteworthy none of these are like oh you have to look out for them the way you, the same way you have to think about Krom, um uh, right in terms of a bow user um but yeah so it's kind of hard. I mean, you know, there's a lot of regular bow users like uh, Norn and all these other people, but they don't even have a lot of specialty weapons, right? <laughs> like this, like this is this is outrageous. So I think uh, he's going to be one of their stronger people to watch out for. Uh, Lysithia, let's take a look here. Oh, I went too far. I only like two seconds. Uh, unfortunately, Lysithia kind of got shafted. She just got the same thing. Uh, just you know, hand me down skills. Um, attack speed push is four is nice. Um, if I end up, if I end up trying to spark, right. And I end up, uh, pulling her, I think problematically for me, um, I'm just going to fodder her off for, I mean, cause these two skills are way too, um, what's the word. They're just way too valuable to, to keep on such a mediocre unit like her. I mean, uh, that's kind of harsh to say, but a lot of her power is basically just coming from these two skills and this. Uh, so, I mean, let's take a look here. Uh, speed, blah, blah, blah. If foe's HP is greater than 75, grants plus 6. So she just gets a plus 6. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's like basic Lysithia. If unit's HP is less than 100 and unit initiates combat, you know, and she just forces doubles, right? Like, I mean, what is this, right? 
Uh, it's not going to be, I mean, you know, she's just a mage with cav effective that forces doubles and gets plus six attack and speed. It's, it's not something we've never seen before. Um, and, you know, people have said this already, right? Like the original Lysithia looks a little bit better just because like hitting somebody with a special on turn one is a lot more threatening than like someone who's just going to like hit you pretty hard. Um, yeah. So that's kind of that. So like I said, I'm probably going to take these two for someone. Uh, unfortunately this one, I mean, this one, they kind of clash, right? Cause this one you want it for, um, I want it for what's her name? Veronica, because we're we have yet to see her refine. <laughs> That's gonna be scary. Uh, and then lull speed res is gonna be good on on someone else. Uh, I actually want lull speed res for um, Brunya, but I don't have the resources to like go further than a plus one Brunya. So uh, it's I'm just gonna like keep her in the back pocket to see who can make the the best uses of all these skills. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's enough of that. Uh, Edelgard got another alt, which is uh, fine because Edelgard. I don't know. I don't like. I said I don't play this game, but out of the three lords or whatever, like, like uh, going in, I'm already picking whatever school Edelgard is. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going over there. <laughs> I don't care, uh, unfortunately. Um, but yeah. So yeah. Uh, she gets distant ward, which is fine. Um, this like giant paragraph Yu-Gi-Oh card looking text box. Uh, you move again. She has extra. She kind of. She's kind of like the other Edelgard with just movement. Um, the fact that she's an armor basically doesn't mean anything to her other than people who have armor effectiveness. So the movement, they go out of their way to like take movement restrictions off of her. Uh, grants the following status to unit. A unit can move to a space adjacent to any ally within. At the start of combat, if unit's HP is bigger than twenty five, inflicts. Yeah. So basically, very similar to the last one we got. Uh, if units blah blah. blah. If units HP and unit makes it, oh, so as long as oh, she just has a uh, quick repost on both phases too, whether she attacks or they attack, which is pretty good. Uh, on you know, conversely, if she ends up attacking, uh, she gets reduced by eighty percent on the second attack. So she's kind of like a almost an a more she's a more aggressive, uh, basically, yeah, she's a more aggressive bike, uh, where bike just wants to sit here and have everybody run into him. She wants to be. She can do both, cause bike on offense, like on player phase, like to hit people, it's it's a nightmare. Like he just sucks at it. Um, that's when you kill bikes, basically. Is you just wait for him to like, you bait him into like trying to hit you, and then he dies usually. Um, but like this one looks like it could be pretty good uh, regardless of what's going on. So whether she's attacking or being attacked, uh, she looks pretty strong. Um, and then joint res is fine as whatever. Um, so in terms of like pulling and for like favor, I would love to pull, I would like to get Edelgard just cause I like Edelgard. Uh, but I'm probably not going to just because I, I like Claude's C skill so much, the attack speed rain. Um, but so that's it for that, I guess. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, one of the things, the, the bigger takeaways from this was watch out for like more uh, rain type skills uh they they're i feel like they're gonna be more just they're gonna be like a flyer our like flyer versions of a lull skill and i kind of like the if they end up being flyer um specific it seems like that but you know who knows um but the flyer lull the flyer uh rain skills look kind of interesting because i like how they synergize with the flyer mentality right Flyers are about movement, but they're not always about like, like to barn and the, a lot of the, the, the beast flyers kind of separate from this mentality of like flyer ball is a flyer ball specifically because there are, a lot of them are kind of designed to be close to each other and, and move as a unit. Um, and I like the fact that these rain skills kind of like encourage that, right? The low skills don't really care and they just go out there and you can be solo. But the fact that like to get most out, to get the most out of the, the rain skills you kind of have to think about it like a flyer thing, right? Um, but yeah, so that's that. It's it's interesting too that it's like it's not as valuable, I think, because you're you're boosting 
different stats. So you're dropping their attack and their speed by four. Where a regular uh, ward or goad boosts you by four, right? So goad, the, the cool thing about this is it, it handles multiple things at once. So if you're running goad, you're boosting your defense or ward, you're boosting your defense and your res by four. The fact that you're reducing the enemy uh, attack by four means you're boosting your defense and res by four. So that one minus four to attack on the enemy is pulling or is already as good as having a ward, right? Or yeah, ward. But then you add on the fact that they're reducing speed is pretty good because it's basically you know lo them losing four speed. It's kind of like you gaining four speed. So you're getting a ward and a half with this skill, which is pretty cool. Um, it only kind of works with the attack, so it has to have attack and then something else. Um, and the speed is obviously a very valuable thing. <laughs> um, though, like I said, I I, would, I think I would prefer the the speed, the attack, defense, just for the sake of um, making people easier to kill. Because a lot of my flyer units are going to be uh, decently fast. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of interesting stuff out there for flyers at the moment. Uh, who knows what we'll get next? Um, for the flyer ball, basically it means that running Ashnard, like I said, <laughs> is uh, infinitely more valuable because you can run Ashnard with a minus five from his weapon, minus four from the rain, um, make it harder to double your other units as well as, uh, leave them more vulnerable because you actually do have the minus five defense. Like it's good for people who invented who invented who invested in Ashnard out here is what is basically what it comes down to because that rain skill is probably the most important skill to come out of here for the flyer ball um like i said the guard bearing kind of like it's it's good but you know you're going to be fighting against people who don't really care too much about it so like um you know leaf is not going to care um and then you know the dive bomb again that's more for player phase than it is for uh enemy phase for uh you know ai control uh, what else? So yeah. So on the other hand, you know, you might just want to run Claude as instead of the Ashnard. So for those of you who didn't invest in Ashnard um, or Camilla, then there you go. Uh, Claude seems like a pretty good investment. I will not be uh, investing in him personally because I don't like Claude. I think he looks like a douche. Um, but yeah. So that's that. Uh, what else? Other than like, yeah. I mean, that was that was the main thing. Other than like, you know, I guess talking about some of the. Some of the meme tastic. Uh... Hold on, let me see if I can go over here. Yeah, some of the meme tastic uh, builds. Now we can do given um, the what's it called? The the mangoes, the IV mangoes. Um, running a, a plus defense Brunya to make her more tanky uh, looks like a lot of fun to me, anyway. Um, who was I talking about? There was someone. <laughs> I've been thinking about my my Boki recently, so let's kind of go over here. Let's go Boki. Oh, actually, I was about to spell out Boki in there. Loki. So my Loki is not like it's kind of fifty fifty when it comes to CC vantage units, right? Um, well, not even fifty fifty. Either you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong, right? So if you're doing it right, you end up with Kronia, who just vantage one shots everybody who fights her um what's her name uh felicia is kind of like that right now too because the broadleaf fan is just so oppressively powerful on her that she really does do the cc vantage sweep very well now um <laughs> but Boki is sort of in a middle ground for me like she does the job i've needed her to right I, i've been in a i've been in tier 27 i've been pretty successful uh, and Aether Raids with her, um, but she doesn't do the best job of just sweeping, right? So they attack, she vantages and kills them right off the bat. Um, she's always been more of like, she's tanky enough to, to she, she, she's strong enough to one-shot weaker units, and she's tanky enough to, um, to, to, to just brawl with like sli slightly stronger units. Um, so like if they're too tanky to get one shot and then they hit her, she can take a hit and then hit back and then usually that kills them. If not, usually she'll survive long enough to, uh, you know, do something else, right? Um, but 
what I'm thinking now that the the that you know attack speed rain has come out, um, what I'm thinking is that maybe I should put her on put it on her take off the vantage, and start thinking about trying to run a just like a mixed tank type thing, right? Um, so not focus so much on the one shot back, but like be able to just sit there and 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 fight with everybody. Uh, it's gonna be really hard, specifically the fact that. Um, Spendthrift Bow resets her noontime, uh, but I do think it's something uh, that might be worth looking into now that the attack speed thing is there. Because you're reducing their attack by 7, plus another 4, that's 11 reduction, without even mentioning uh, like Aversa debuffs or um, Brave Camilla debuffs on them. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of like my thought process there is like, maybe put something in the B slot passive that isn't... Uh, vantage and might be useful to her so maybe like guard um, but she takes a lot of damage being in the front line over there so that might not be uh, it but yeah so like I said out of all this the, the most interesting thing to come out uh, really was that uh, attack speed rain um, just because it, it it opens up the possibilities of other uh, rain type skills for one and uh, it's the one that's going to be the most useful for not only just defense, right, but also offense on bo on my Boki specifically. Um, so yeah, I think uh, for those of you out there who uh, take anything from this, just know that this is a, an interesting time for flyers. We're getting a lot of stuff. Some of it is kind of bait. Um, like I said, like you know, the Tavarn dive bomb thing was kind of baity. Um, Hell wasn't necessarily bait. She's a very good unit, and you always need mythics on your team. Um, to, to do pretty well on defense on, on an Aether Raids just to reduce your uh, lift loss <laughs> but I think yeah like the ultimate thing that came out of this is is uh, the oh I I kept is the uh, rain I can't believe I forgot about her uh, she actually gets she can get a boon now question is what would I what would I run on her let's go take a look here for a second so air and peony uh, let's go look at Spendthrift Bow. This is getting kind of off track here. Um, but yeah, I already kind of, basically that was the, the summation. I'm not going to go over any, over anything else here other than just kind of uh, mess around with this build here in front of you guys. Um, close foil. Uh, right now she's on Vantage, like I said, but I might change this. Uh, you can't put the rain skill in here, so let's put, let's just keep her on the smoke. Uh, and then down here it's IOTS, right? Because you got IOTS. Okay. Um, yeah, this is kind of interesting. I don't, I'm not sure what I would give her in terms of a boon. Let's go see what kind of boon she even has. Because some people just have, they just get a plus two, and that's about it. Let's see, like a plus two, plus three attack. I might go with the attack. That looks pretty, pretty meaty. Uh, speed gets C. Speed, you just get two. Defense, you get. Uh, three. I kind of like how symmetrical that is. Like, for one, there's three sevens, and for two, uh, you've got the um, the the matching defense. I, I I don't know. It, it's a detriment in the long run for me, or to to you and to anyone in general. But uh, I just like having the defense and the res match, being kind of anal about that, um, which is why I have this uh, Brunia here with the defense. I mean, obviously they don't match, and they're not gonna. They're probably never gonna match. But the fact, like, I have this. You have a you, you have a tendency to get distracted by the like oh let's bring up this stat to match the other one when a lot of times uh, you don't really want to do that it, it's like just leave that the way it is and work around what she has so if Brunia doesn't have a whole lot of defense don't stress out too much about trying to stack defense from somewhere uh, worry more about accentuating her other uh, aspects um, like Minerva right like don't worry too much about boosting Minerva's res to try to like you know quote unquote patch it up maybe focus on something else like if she can't if she's not very good at uh she has very low res kind of focus on like your the rest of your team right because you everything in this game is team based right you have other you have other units so you, you want to work work around those things um but yeah so this is i mean like i said this is kind of a small thing but i, I do like the fact that it's 37 and 37 but i think that's that's detrimental because you'd be giving up. Uh, let's go see what the res one looks like. Yeah, you'd be giving up the uh, the attack boon, and that's three. That's nothing to sneeze at. Um, three more attack on my Boki. Who knows? Maybe that could be 
uh, the start of, of like, let's see. Yeah, because if we had like, okay, so let's pretend this is, uh, let's just get, uh, well, whatever, it's already on there. I can't take it off now. Oh, there's, let's pretend for a moment um, more of these rain skills are going to come out, right? My, what I want to me, what would be the best would be like, uh, well, yeah, I wonder. Probably a speed defense. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Like a speed defense rain. Yeah, that's not worth it because you just get one out of that. Um, like a speed defense rain. That way you don't get outsped. You're outspeeding people. Um, and with the defense rain reduction, you're basically giving yourself four attack, four more attack, plus the five attack from close foil, plus the seven attack from spendthrift bow, and you're stacking on some serious uh, damage at that point. Um, but yeah, so, you know... When when any kind of rain comes out with a with a with a defense on there, I think uh, I think we'll be in some solid business. Um, I'm probably gonna take off the uh, the current thing that I have on for that specifically. So uh, yeah, any of you who who might want to as well, you know, keep just keep an eye out on that. Um, is all I'm saying. Um, and I think it's funny. I actually went half a season without IO shield without even noticing. Uh, and then I put it on her and completed a season. I think it was last season because I had it on the, um, I had it on the Camilla, and I forgot to switch it. Off. I forgot to put it back on Loki, and I went for a really long time without it. So, part of me is maybe thinking, you know, I should put put something else other than Iot Shield, um, but that's going to be like that's that's going to be when I get my Norn ready, so that I'll have multiple options. So I'll go into a team and be like, okay, this team has a bow user on their side. So I'm going to use Norn this time, but for the most part, I'm probably just going to stick with Camilla, uh, with Loki, uh, and then take off the IO shield. Um, because, again, it, it's wasted if you're not fighting against bow users. And from the looks of it, there's not a whole lot of bow users out there on defense. Um, at least good defenses anyway. But yeah, well, it, it's something I'll have to think about. Um, but yeah, like I said, keep an eye out for more rain skills. Uh, they, 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 they are probably going to be like the best thing flyers are ever going to get. Um, but yeah, so that's it for that's it for today's video. Um, don't know if I'll make a video tomorrow, um, Monday. I'm I'm switching. I'm actually going to switch up the uh, the schedule for that. So Monday, I'm just going to do my eighth of raids offense video um, because by the time it's Tuesday, it's already a new season and nobody cares about what happened last season anymore. So I think I'm just going to put my uh, eighth of raids offense video on the um, on the Monday, and then the Tuesday is going to be the Aether Raids recap, uh, defense recap, to because to, uh, that's still relevant. I mean, that information about how your defense is working and, and what to patch up in the next week is always relevant. So I think that's that's okay to move back to, to Tuesday. Um, so Monday is going to be back to uh, ba basically the regular schedule of having the uh, Aether Raids offense videos. Uh, but yeah, that's it for that. Um, as always, be smart with your orbs. Uh, don't get baited. Um, like I said, I'm not even sure I'm going to be pulling on the the current the the Choose Your Legends banner. I might just you know get the free Claude and just peace out. Um, but yeah, so that's that.